You're watching Nissan Sports Beat. Nissan, innovation that excites. Hi there, everybody, and welcome to our Sports Beat special college football preview. For the next three weeks, we will get you ready for the college football season with a half hour devoted to our local football teams. Yeah, we'll begin with the BYU Cougars, who are beginning a new era with Kalani Sataki as head coach. And in his first season, they face a daunting schedule. Absolutely. Ten of BYU's 11 opponents have played in bowl games last season, and Southern Utah won the Big Sky and reached the FCS playoffs as well yeah six of their 12 games are against power five schools it's an impressive list on paper <laughs> look at that schedule the first three games are against pac-12 teams west virginia at fedex field toledo won 10 games last year their road games against michigan state and boise state home game against mississippi state of the sec and all that before november even yeah. begins <laughs> the cougars are ready to take on the challenge when you saw the schedule for the first time, what was your reaction? <laughs> I was I was pumped, man. I'm still pumped about it. Awesome. <laughs> Woo, let's get it. You know what I mean? It's going to be fun. I loved it. What better schedule to have, you know, especially as this will be my senior season. At first, I was kind of like, really? I was like, about time, you know? We got to we gotta play some guys that, that, that we know we can play, we can play uh, football with. <laughs> What should the expectation be for this team? Sometimes we put those expectations on you. I want to give you that chance. My expectation is always to win every single game, obviously. And you have, we have a very tough schedule, and I, and I love that. You have to believe that you're going to win every game. You know, like everyone's expectation on this team is to go undefeated. And you have to. Like, if someone doesn't have that mentality, then, I, you know, then I'm, I'm kind of questioning them, right? Like, There's not a, a game on that schedule that we can't go and compete and, and win. People know that every week we have a chance to, we have a very good chance to win. It's going to be a competition for sure. It's because the competition will make you better, you know what I mean? So you play against better people, better teams, and you'll get better. Your team will get better. And Rosen pumps, goes, has an end in the end zone, touchdown. The fact that you're going to be underdogs in a lot of games, especially at the start of the season, does that give you some stuff you can use to get these guys motivated and fire up and maybe get a little bit of a chip on their shoulder? Yeah, I hope so. I, I hope we have a little chip. And, and part of it might be because of me being inexperienced, being the underdog. <laughs> and nobody knows what they're going to get. Anytime you have that chip on your shoulder, you tune in a little bit more and you, you focus a little bit and, and you work a little bit harder knowing uh, what you have going into. We're going to be able to go out, play those games, and be able to put our name out there and be able to gain respect from the nation, pretty much. No one really respects BYU. We're just kind of the Mormon, Mormon kids to them, everyone. But we've won some big games, and we're going to continue to do so. It's funny to read people's tweets and see what they say about us and then be able to go on the field and push them around and come out with a W and then they got a long flight home. Uh, playing against a bunch of grown men, what's got me concerned is we're playing a lot of young kids, 17, 18, 19 years old, and their guys are 24, 25 years old and, and uh, been around a little bit, so they're mature. Our guys aren't shaving yet, and those guys got beards, you know? Well, they're not allowed to have beards, I don't know. But uh, it's, uh, it's gonna be a great challenge. Plus, we don't know what they're doing, and uh, there's a lot of unknowns. They got a great staff put together, some really talented players. I've watched some film. They got some really talented players, and. Uh, I think it's probably going to be sold out, so it's going to be a neat atmosphere. Is there one game on the schedule that stands out to you most? <laughs> uh, there is, but I'm, I'm focused on Arizona. Honestly, like the first eight <laughs> games because they're amazing. <laughs> it's just another schedule for me, you know what I mean? But I do want to play UCLA, though. UCLA is the one I look forward to the most. The UCLA game, because we were so close last year, and that was a game we let slip. Definitely the Utah game. That's number one on my list. To be honest, I just... I just want to play already, you know, so September 3rd, here we come, you know. All right, Jeremiah, a lot to look at, but looking at the schedule, what stands out to you the most? Well, I think it's the first four games of the season. I look at those first four games. Arizona's a team with a lot of talent, a lot of speed, something yeah. BYU teams of the past have struggled to match up with. The rivalry game with Utah, I think the Utes are the toughest defense BYU will match up with all year. Home against UCLA, 
which is picked to win the Pac-12 South, one of the toughest divisions in college football. Then you have to travel across the country and play West Virginia, a team picked to finish seventh in the Big 12, but a team with an explosive offense and plenty of speed, just like Arizona. You know, what record does BYU have to have after four games and how healthy are you going to be after that brutal stretch? We'll know a lot more about this team once that stretch is over. Yeah, and then you've got that uh, Aggie game at the very end of the season. They might be so well. worn out and tired by yeah. then. Who knows? Yeah, it's, gonna, it's, a, it, it's a grind. It, it's going to be fun. And uh, they got to take on that challenge with new coaching staff, the Kalani Sataki era, beginning at BYU. Uh, he's built a staff consisting, uh, consisting mostly of uh, former BYU players, including Heisman Trophy winner Ty Detmer. Yeah, it's a great staff. Coach Sataki and his staff are young, and they lack experience, but they've already earned the respect of the players. Transition has been awesome. I think, you know, I take my hat off to Coach Sataki, uh, what he's done in such a small amount of time with creating that excitement um, around the team, you know, for the fans, for us as players. I would say the biggest thing, Kalani, is he is he's a players coach. You know, he's a funny guy and, you know, kind of soft-spoken off the field, but when he gets on the field, he just, he, just, he turns it on. Oh, yeah, they bring that edge, you know. It's, they're so competitive. And especially being Polynesian, um, I embrace it. You know, when he tries to turn it up, you know, I got to turn it up too. And so uh, I think just having that, that connection allows me to kind of, I guess, embrace it and, and bring it out. Just two different, two different styles. And Coach Menahal was, was awesome. I love Coach Menahal. And then, yeah, Coach Otaki and his staff are, are great too. And he has been a really good example to me of just showing his love and caring for people and making sure that everyone's taken care of and that we have each other's backs, that we're really looking out for each other. When you talk to him, you can just feel comfortable around him. and He's very personable and, 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 and loving. Everything he does is for us. Everything he wants to do is to take care of us. He's just really more, more of a family now. Just the way he, he conducts himself and the way he interacts with all the players. Everyone trusts him. You know, he loves BYU. He's got a, a very strong passion for the school and this team. And that, that's contagious. I've been really impressed with uh, his message you know, to the athletes and also to the parents, and even just you know handling you know the transition. Uh, again, just you know I was, I was smiling a little bit, shaking my head, and okay, he's going to be okay. Yeah. We are all loyal, strong, and true. We wear the white and blue. Whether it's royal or navy, we own it because it's BYU blue. Ty Detmer. What's it like playing for one of the greatest to ever do it here, a Heisman it's Trophy awesome. winner? It's awesome. You know, it's, it's been very evident to me that he's been around football for so long, right? And, and he comes having played in the NFL, having had that experience in the NFL for so many years. And that experience is just invaluable, you know, as, as someone who has goals and aspires to play at the next level. Um, I couldn't think of anybody better to, to be mentored by. It's funny because a lot of times when people ask me, hey, can you get me this ball sign, they'll ask me a lot more for the coaches and, and Coach Detmer instead of for the players. He's a good guy. He's funny. Um, he, but he, he really knows his stuff. Um, just, he's just a football genius. It's a special thing. And sometimes you forget now, like, because we spend so much time with him and working with him, you forget that he won the Heisman. You forget that he was one of the greatest to ever do it. Great teacher, great coach. Not a lot of quarterback coaches and offensive coordinators that have Ty's experience dealing with so many different personalities and, and in the league and also running the program. So he, he knows what it's all about. And although he hasn't had much experience in the college game, I can name a bunch of people that could tell you that, right, that uh, he's fine. And, and I've seen it firsthand now in spring and I'm not, I'm not really concerned. They're my friends, even though they're a little bit older, you know, starting to get gray hairs. They're my friends, you know, they'll be my friends for life because they're those kind of people that just want to be friends with you, and that's the way that we're going to grow as a team. Now, of course, Kalani's had some uh, successful mentors, Lavelle Edwards, Kyle Whittingham, Gary Anderson, but this is his first head coaching job, so you know there's going to be some growing pain. So, Jeremiah, uh, what is he going to need? What kind of help is he going to need to be successful in his first year? Well, he's got to have strength on his staff, and it helps to have, you know, a, a guy that's been there before and done that. They've got talented players. Number one, proven quarterbacks, and, and they also have a guy named like Ed Lamb, yeah. who has been there, who's coached teams. He's not getting enough attention. I don't think that hire's getting enough yeah. attention. Kalani was able to bring in someone that has been a successful head coach that also played at BYU and understands BYU. He turned Southern Utah into a winner and developed NFL talent in Cedar City, yeah. something that's never been done before. Uh, he worked under Jim Harbaugh at San Diego, so he brings that experience to the program as well. Ed Lamb was a very important hire for this program. 
you would not go into our locker room and you would not hear one conversation about this. Our BYU football preview continuing as we look at the battle for the starting quarterback position. Taysom and Tanner. Well, might as well start with the elephant in the room, right? All right. <laughs> Don't know. We'll wait and see. Let them both practice. Figure out what's best for the team. We'll make a decision at that point. <laughs> you got it down. How was that? That was pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Welcome back to the BYU Football Preview Show. No question what the biggest storyline will be during fall camp for the Cougars quarterback position. Who will win the battle for the starting job? Taysom Hill, Tanner Mangum, both players, Jeremiah, are on preseason award watch lists. Yeah, it's a pretty good problem to have. Quarterback battles, though, can split a locker room and become a distraction. We all remember what happened with Riley Nelson and Jake Heaps. Players and coaches tell us, though, that that won't happen in this situation. I think it's just a whole different players in here now. I don't think that's going to happen this year. I mean, we love, everyone loves each other. It's a brotherhood. Oh, I can't. You can't. Because there's too many of us, too many of us uh, taking over the team, you know. We all here for each other. We all know that it's just part of football. You're going to have competitions, and then you know, we take whoever is the best one. So, but at the same time, we know that they're both great. From my experience with the whole situation is, I think it kind of, the personalities of the people involved. Um, these two are two solid, awesome dudes. And they don't have, I don't think, any negative feelings or thoughts about it. And I think since we see how it reflects to them, we're kind of positive about it as well, if that kind of makes sense. Support, just protecting, protecting the family, like Kalani says a lot. Um, just kind of support them as, as best as we can. How much does it help, though, that this, these guys have the trust of their teammates? This isn't one half the team supporting one guy or the other. No, we, we won't have that for sure. Um, both guys have the respect and, and admiration of the team that I think uh, whoever's taking the snap on that given play is going to be uh, respected and, and have, the team's going to have confidence that they'll get the job done. Look, I, I think you, you say everybody's talking about the competition. When you say everybody, it's the media, right? I, you would not go into our locker room and you would not hear one conversation about this. It's not like a team Tanner or team Taysom. Like, we're on the same team. We're, we're playing for BYU here. You know, we want this team to win. Everyone is the fans, and, and rightfully so, right? I get it. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a non-issue in, in my eyes. I don't think that the team, I don't, I don't think it's an issue to them. We both get along, we're friends, and, and we're, we get along with guys on the team, so I don't see it being a problem. We both don't see it being a problem. Tanner and I have a good relationship. You know, it's not that, that uh, we have some, some other stuff going on. And you can still be friends, even though you're competitors, and I think that's the mindset you have to have, is that whatever happens, it's, it's gonna be for the best of the team. I really just do not view it as an issue. Who do you start, Taysom or Tanner? Shoot. Not my decision. <laughs> this is not mine. Are you glad that's not your decision? I'm so glad it ain't my decision. You can relate to these guys. You went through this as a player. What can you do to help them through this process as they compete and try to win that job? So what I've told them is just be the best player you can be. You know, you can't worry about what the other guy's doing. If he makes a long throw for a touchdown, you can't go out there and try to do that too. You can't get caught up in competing against someone. You got to get caught up in running the system, competing against yourself, how many in a row can I hit, and how, how successful can I help the guys around me be. You know, being BYU and being the, the position, a quarterback gets a lot of attention, but every position group, every position on the team, offense, defense, and special teams will go through a competition, the best will play. And so quarterback's no different. You know, I can feel at ease knowing that it will be handled on the field and, and the best will play, and, and uh, I can go to bed at night. And I think our players are looking forward to competition. For me personally, I've played with both of them. I'm protected for both of them. And I love both of them. So whoever's back there is going to be my quarterback. And however that works out in the spring, or I mean the fall, we'll see how that turns out and who's going to be back there starting against Arizona. All right, Jeremiah, two different quarterbacks here. All-purpose Taysom Hill, pocket passer, and Tanner Mangum. They say they want to go with one guy, but do you think if both are healthy, they, we may see a two QB rotation system? Obviously, nothing's been said yet, but I don't see that. I mean, you don't have two y young, unproven players in this situation yeah. where coaches are waiting for one or the other to emerge. Both are proven commodities. Both have led the Cougars to big wins. Both have made big plays that are among some of the most memorable in school history. 
So moving quarterbacks in and out with these guys doesn't seem like it would give them any kind of an advantage, disrupts rhythm. I mean, a firm answer to that question probably won't be determined until we know who wins the starting job, but no matter what scenario plays out, I don't see a two-quarterback rotation. I think you have a different idea. Well, I would like to see both of them in the backfield at the same time, somewhat on a consistent basis. Can you imagine? It could be a halfback option uh, with Taysom Hill, uh, halfback option pass, the threat of that every single time. You've already called Ty about that one. Well, no, I'm sure he's already thought about that stuff. But can you imagine the different uh, setups They'll that have they could options. have with those guys? You have, that, you have dynamic players yeah. like that. You want to get them on the field. I just don't know how they're going to manage that. Sure. How difficult would that be for the linebackers and the corners if Taysom's back in the backfield with Tanner and they can't? go and they can't push back because got the running and passing threat. So, All right, that's the offensive side of the ball. Let's move to defense. Bronco Mendenhall, of course, had his own style of defense, but Kalani has a different setup here. So on the defensive side of the ball, may take a while for these guys to get in sync. Yeah, players that have been taught to play in a 3-4 defense must now transition to a 4-3 corners who have played zone and will now have to play man press. Well, I asked defensive players and coaches how that transition is going. Just as far as um, comfort level and, and belief in, in one or the other, and just felt like uh, going down to a four down system would, would benefit uh, the players a little bit better. I like it a lot more. It takes a lot of stress off, off the middle linebacker. You know, I, have, uh, I have another huge body taking on blows in front of me. I knew all the ins and, ins and outs of that defense, but now going into this defense, I'm doing almost identical to what I was doing. And the coaches are putting me in positions to make plays, which is awesome. I think now it's a little bit less stress on my body. <laughs> More opportunities for me to make plays. Nobody is winning in college or professional football right now, sitting in zone defenses all game. Uh, you've got to be able to match up and, and put some pressure on a quarterback. And I think we've got the guys to do that. You know, I always wanted to play man. But now that we get to play man every single down, or usually almost every single down, it'll be... You ready for that pressure? Yeah, I'm ready. You on an island? Yeah, I'm ready for it. Oh, they've all bought in, you know. Um, it, it, of course, it takes time, um, but they've all bought in, and um, they're all anxious, anxious to go. So it should be fun. In this defense, we're going to take risks. You know, there will be a couple, you know, big plays thrown on us, but you know, we're going to always pressure the QB, make sure he makes a mistake, so then we can capitalize on his mistakes. And so, definitely a lot of opportunities to make plays. Longy gets in, chasing him, tripping up, and taking him down. It's a sack for Harvey Longy. How important is Harvey Longy? Harvey's one of the leaders on the defense, you know. Vocal guy. The kids uh, kids look up to him. You know, he expects a lot from himself. Not a guy that just yaps, you know, for free. He's a guy that's been there and, and done things. And so, um, you know, kids look up to him. We're excited about him and his leadership. He brings a lot to the table. Not only is Simon sound, but just um, some dogs out there. That's just the, the biggest thing that I want. I just want all of us to just have fun and just party at the pile and just be some dogs. Harvey will make us wild. Harvey's out there. Harvey's really emotional in the games. And to be honest, like, when Harvey gets wild, like, we all get wild. I mean, just, you know, just like a domino effect, we all get wild. It's just unity. I mean, as long as you have unity, we'll be just fine. We'll be, like, we'll be strong. If our defense can come together and play, or we know how to play, our, our season will be, be a success. I'm saying that because I'm biased to the defensive side. <laughs> as you should be. As, yeah, so. The dark side plays the way that we should. It's going to be a very successful year. <laughs> the dark side. Yeah, the dark side. Uh, <laughs> I think I know what your answer is going to be, but what is the uh, biggest question mark in your mind for the defense? I think you look at the DBs. It has to be the secondary. Yeah. They're making the transition from zone to man press on the corners. That's difficult to do. I do think they have the talent to do that. Kai Naku and Micah Hanneman at the safety position, both are proven players. Micah back at his more natural position. Michael Davis is a corner, he's a senior. I think he can get this done. Um, I know they like the young talent they have as well. They'll have to battle it out to start at the other speed, corner position. Speed, speed, yeah, and to they, play press. I think they think these guys have it. I mean, they like their depth. Michael Three Shelton, Troy Warner, the heralded right freshman there. coming in. He's a guy I think you look at. Akili Davis and Diane Lake from Northridge High yeah. School are a couple more guys that have that speed. It's going to be a challenge. We want to go out and we want to kick people in the teeth. Make sure that people know that they played BYU. BYU football preview show continuing as we get you pumped up for a new era of Cougar football. Welcome back to our BYU football preview show. Cougar fans, it is now time to get pumped up for some football. Yeah, it's coming soon. Here's a sample of what you can expect to see this season as the new era of BYU football begins. Running out the, the stadium, the tunnel, it's like 
breathtaking. Guess you are excited, all tingling inside, ready to go. It's the last one last year. Don't get another chance to do this again. Fight us, dominate us. We want to go out and we want to kick people in the teeth. Make sure that people know that they played BYU. and he's got room to the right. Tucks, throws anyway. In the end zone, it is caught! It's caught for a touchdown! Last play of the game. Got time, loads up, launches it. Goes for the end zone. The ball's in the air, it drops. At the goal line, I think he caught it for a touchdown! He 